Welcome to FPC Security. For outswinging door kits, you will see the following kit numbers below. 5324, 5328, 5332. For in-swinging door kits, you will see the following kit numbers below. 5325, 5329, and 5333. For proper installation, please make sure that you have the following diagram and installation manuals of each individual product on hand. Warning, please read carefully before installing this kit. It's very important that you take the time and read each section of this before installing this kit. In order to get started with this installation, you need to make sure you have the following tools on hand. First step will be to take the power supply that is provided in the kit and cut the end of the connector. When cutting is complete, you will find two wires at the end of the power supply. The positive side of the power supply is identified by the white dashes along the wire, or you will see that it comes in the color red. The negative wire will be solid black. This step is going to be connecting five wires together, mostly using the negative portion of power supply number one. Let's get started. Now we will get the same negative wire from the power supply and connect it to the negative black wire from the exit button. So now let's get the negative wire from the power supply again and connect it to the negative black wire from the keypad slash reader. We are now going to connect the negative of this power supply to the common or COM terminal of the PIR motion detector. In this last step, we're going to get the same negative wire from the power supply and connect it to the common COM green wire from the exit button. This step will be using the positive wire from the power supply and connecting a group of three wires. Let's start by getting the positive side of the power supply and connect it to the positive red wire of the reader slash keypad. Next step will be getting the red positive wire from the power supply and connecting it to the red positive wire from the exit button.
In this step, we'll be connecting the maglock to the reader slash keypad and to the exit button. For this step, you will connect the positive red wire from the maglock to the orange wire from the keypad slash reader. Now we will connect the negative black wire from the maglock to the purple wire from the keypad slash reader. Now let's connect the yellow wire from the keypad slash reader to the NO or normally open blue wire from the exit button. For this step, we will be connecting the PIR to the keypad slash reader. The normally closed terminal or NC terminal from the PIR motion detector will be connected to the yellow wire from the keypad slash reader. In this step, we will connect the power supply to the doorbell and PIR motion detector. Go ahead and get power supply number two and grab the positive red wire from the power supply and connect it to the positive terminal of the PIR motion detector. Immediately after that, get the same positive wire from the power supply and connect it to the positive red wire from the doorbell speaker. Now get the negative black wire from the second power supply and connect it to the negative terminal of the PIR motion detector. When you have completed that, get the same negative wire from the power supply and connect it to the black negative wire from the doorbell speaker. Now we will connect the doorbell speaker to the keypad reader. Let's start by getting the gray wire from the reader slash keypad and connect it to the yellow wire from the doorbell speaker.
Next step will be to get the blue wire from the reader slash key pen and connect it to the green wire from the doorbell. Now we're, just, we're going over the dip switches. Make sure that the one is up, two is down, three is down, four is up, five is down, six is down, seven is down, eight is down, nine is up, and 10 is up. This will assure that the PR will work correctly. In this step, we will show you a summary of all the connections. In this step, we will create some type of user log. This log can be created in Excel or a piece of paper. For example purposes, I will go ahead and show you a template that we created in Excel. Remember that each user can have different ways to enter the system. So here I will show you all different types of examples. This part is extremely important because it allows you to keep track of every user. This will allow you to easily delete a certain user in the future. Let's say the username is Paul and you only gave Paul a proximity card so you will only enter his proximity card number. Now let's say you gave another employee a proximity card and key tag and pin. It's all up to you on what type of access you want the user to have. In this step, we will show you on how to change the master code. The default master code is eight, six times. Eight, 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 eight. So we're going to start by pressing the star eight, six times, pound, now press zero. Then we will enter the new master code, which will be one six times for example purposes. Pound. Now we will repeat the new master code one six times and pound. In this step, we will show you how to manually add the proximity card or key tags. Remember that for this step, we will use the new master code that we entered on the previous step. If you have not changed your master code, remember that the default factory code is eight six times. Now we will go into programming mode. Press star key and then one six times, pound, 
the number one and pass the proximity card or the key tag. That's it. Press star until you see the red solid light to test the card. Now you can see that we're going to swipe the card. It opens the mag lock. We're going to swipe the key tag. And you'll see that the mag lock is open. In this step, we will show you how to delete the proximity cards and key tags manually. Remember that we're going to go into programming mode and your master code, uh, for example purposes, will be one six times. Let's go ahead and press star one six times. Pound the number two and present the proximity card or key tag the keypad slash reader then we're going to press star until we see the solid red light just to test the theory there you see there that uh, they're not working the lock remains secured in this step we will teach you how to manually enter the user id and user pin now we will go ahead into programming mode by entering star one six times and pound the number one two for the user ID and pound. Then you're going to put, for example, purposes 6520 and then pound. To exit programming mode, press star until we see the red solder light. Now we're going to test our code. Before we do that, keep in mind that you have a thousand users, okay? So we just did user number one or two to enter the pin. So the next one would be three, four, etc. Six, five, two, zero, pound. And now you'll see that the uh, mag lock disengages. In this step, we will teach you how to manually delete a user ID and user pin. We will go into a uh, master programming. So star one six times. Pound the number two. User ID two. Pound and then star until we see the uh, solid red light. Now I'll show you that I went ahead and I deleted uh, everything that it pertained to uh, to user two. So now the pin code no longer works, as you can see, it does not disengage. In this step, we will teach you on how to set different time delays. Meaning, if you want the door to stay open for 5 seconds or more, the system comes default with 50 milliseconds. So here we go, um, we're going to go into programming mode. Press star, 1, 6 times. Pound the number four and the number five for the seconds that we want right now, plus pound. And we're going to hit star until we see the red solid light. As you can see now, it's uh, locked. Now we unlocked it and you'll see that it stays open for more or less five seconds. And that's it. You can do this for 10 seconds up to 90 seconds, I believe. In this step, we're going to show you how to reset the keypad to factory settings. Make sure you have the power off. Now we're going to make sure we press our star button before we put it back on. We're going to hear two beeps. Then when you hear the two beeps, take your finger off and then it will be followed by one beep. 
and there you go. We went ahead and, uh, and reset the system. So, you know, in order to test that out to see if we did it correctly, uh, we're going to try to put in the uh, default master pin uh, to see if that works. So it's star eight, six times and pound. All right, great. So it worked and we reset it back to default settings. This is something you can use when uh, everything has failed and uh, you need to restore it. Now we will show you how the system works. As you can see there, the, the lock is secured. It's locked. We're going to press the uh, proximity card. Now it opened it. Now it's locked. We're going to press the exit button one time. We see that it's locked, unlocked. We're going to press the PIR by motion and then also unlock the mag lock. Doorbell. That's it. That's how the system works. Here you see an example of how a lock installed on the out swinging doors. This is just an example. Uh, there's many different ways to do it, uh, but this is one of them. So this is an example of how to uh, install a mag lock with an LNC bracket in a door that swings in. So here we show you how to mount the plate on the LNC bracket and also how to mount it on the door itself. Okay, so that's the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. In order for us to be able to do more videos for you in the future, 
please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Also, please like the page as well. In order to find all of our products, please feel free to visit our website at www.fpc-security.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to view our video. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please list them below. Thank you so much.